All right, welcoming Cody Tucker back in. And uh, Cody, big matchup on Saturday. The Cougars uh, coming to War Memorial Stadium. Give me a sense uh, for the, the, the feeling around this program as to the matchup about BYU. I guess what matchup are you most concerned about for, and speaking from the Wyoming perspective? Well, you got to start with the Cougars' defense. I mean, they held SMU to five field goals in Dallas last week, and Wyoming's offense has give you, given you little reason to believe that they can move the football. They weren't able to do it at Tem in Tempe. They weren't able to do it much against Idaho. Uh, but once again, Jake, just those bonehead penalties, man, that, that has really hampered this squad. They had one chance at Arizona State in that second quarter to really write the – or in that second drive, I should say, of the game to really write the ship after throwing a pick six. Started moving the moving the ball, got the ball past midfield. Boom, boom, two penalties in a row, and the next thing you know, it's another interception and the uh, avalanche is on. Um, so many opportunities to beat Idaho last week. Uh, they have the ball first and goal at the one yard line. Ball starts. Uh, they end up kicking a twenty two yard field goal. That can't happen, and uh, that has really been a huge, huge issue so far. Um, I, I want to say the Cowboys had thirty five penalties all of last season. <laughs> you know, they already at 16. Yeah. You can't do it, man. You can't have it. So uh, the defense for BYU is definitely um, something that everybody has their mind on. You mentioned a little earlier that, you know, Caden Barnett gave up three sacks. To his credit, spoke with him this week. He absolutely uh, owned it. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he knew that James Newby, the edge rusher for Idaho, he knew that Keyshawn was uh, had the snap count down and – on one play, even Jake, he blew around the edge and hammered Evan Sabota. He was offside, but they didn't blow the whistle in time, and he absolutely dropped Evan on his wallet. And, uh, you know, so technically, uh, you know, not a fourth sack, but, uh, you know, the damage was done, in injury to insult to injury. And, uh, yeah, man, I just – I think BYU's defense is, you know, around here everybody jokes about BYU's age, of course, because they're a lot older than Wyoming, uh, to say the least. It was amazing in 2022, uh, before that game in Provo, you looked and there were six guys that actually played against Wyoming in the 2016 point set of bowl. Uh, so uh, much older than Wyoming, much bigger, much stronger, much faster in some cases. And uh, that is definitely a concern for Evan Sabota, who, uh, you know, aside from Air Force's quarterback, which as your listeners know, Air Force runs an option. Uh, he's the only one saving from Evan, saving Evan from being at the bottom of the barrel in almost every single passing category in the country. Now, uh, speaking about Evan Savota, he's got a connection to Utah. He played at Snow College down in Ephraim before going to Wyoming. He is a big dude. Are they yep. trying to essentially get back in the, the mold of getting the Josh Allens of the world back at Wyoming at quarterback? Because Savota is 6'5", 245, 250, it looks like. Yeah, no, he's a huge human being. He's way bigger than Josh. And uh, earlier this year in Bill's training camp, when the college football play, uh, the college football video game came out, he said, you know, yeah, I'm playing with Wyoming, of course, and they have a quarterback who can throw it over the mountain. And uh, Evan can do that. We just haven't seen it yet. Uh, he's got a huge arm. He's he's ripped. They call him Drago. He looks just like Drago, too. Um, it just, you know, he wanted the number 17. He wanted to wear Josh's number. Uh, he makes no bones about it that he came to Wyoming a lot because he saw what, what happened with Josh's career trajectory starting in Laramie. And, uh you know, he's embraced that. But right now, you know, you know how it goes, man. The trolls are out in full force after an 0-2 start, especially when it's an 0-2 start like this. And people are demanding he gets rid of number 17 and quits wearing that number. So uh, that's how – that pretty much sums up how things have been around here for the last two weeks. Now, you mentioned Harrison Whaley has not been available this season. I He was an electric running back last year, Northern Illinois transfer, if I recall correctly. and. Yep. How much his, his 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 not being available affected this offense? You wouldn't think as much because Wyoming's ran a power game for so long under Craig Bull, and that was going to continue under under Jay Saw Bell. But you can't deny it, man. He he had a sixty five yard touchdown run against Texas last year in Austin. He outraced their secondary with ease. I mean, so not many people can do that. So he's a really special back. They're really missing him. But to be honest with you, DJ Jones is a really nice back too. a transfer from North Carolina. The holes just haven't been there. Um, and the few holes that have, you know, when you watch from the press box, you think Harrison might have broke that. He might have got out of that arm tackle and been gone. And that's something that just DJ hasn't been able to do yet. So they do have a nice stable of running backs. Um, Ashton Genty, of course, is the class of the Mountain West. But as far as a 
an overall group goes, I would put Wyoming up against anybody else in this league. So uh, with a healthy Harrison Whaley, and that just hasn't been the case yet. <clears throat> Obviously hurt his knee two weeks right before right before the season started and had to have a scope. So they're hoping to have him back by at least Air Force. Now, the wide receivers and the just overall receivers, pretty balanced in terms of just the numbers across there. Who is the top wide out or top receiving option for Wyoming, in your opinion? You know, I don't have any problem saying it so far, and he didn't have a catch last week, which is still mind-boggling to me, is Chris Dirt Jr. He's a true freshman out of Chicago. He's not even on the depth charts. And uh, I think that's more of a respect thing for the older guys that have been here uh, because this kid is electric. He had 12 catches for 121 yards in the spring game, caught the only touchdown in Tempe, had three catches in that game. Uh, he came to campus at 143 pounds, uh, was an early enrollee. They said, man, you know, you've got a lot of talent. You've got the speed. You've got the skills. You need to show us. You need to put on at least 10 pounds. Put on well over 10 pounds. He's now at around 173 just in one off season. So uh, really dedicated kid, really smart, ahead of his time kind of guy. I think he's really special. And then, you know, you have some old dogs like Will Pellisier, who's from Bighorn, Wyoming, a fan favorite, of course. And then Alex Brown, who's been here for six years. Mm -hmm. Haven't seen enough out of those guys yet. And haven't seen, you know, with Alex Brown, just haven't seen enough out of him over his six years. He's 6'5", 200 pounds, can fly. Uh, need more out of him. And uh, they'll be the first ones to tell you that. So, you know, out of the wide receivers, uh, those guys are your top targets. Um, for the most part, there's a few other guys, but – they're really missing John Michael Gillenborg. He's a 6'5", 245-pound tight end, all-conference guy in the preseason. He's Evan Sobota's uh, good friend. They're roommates. All we heard about was uh, Andrew Peasley joking last year about this connection between J. Mike and Evan and how they have some weird thing going on where they just he always finds J. Mike. And uh, 84 has not been in the lineup for these first two games with a high ankle sprain. They're hoping to have him back for BYU. I think that's the plan. This kid has a future on Sundays. You can't downplay really how much they've missed him, but, you know, uh, Evan's been so off target and he hasn't had a lot of time in, in some points in games and just has not looked comfortable. And, you know, you think if J. Mike's in there, that's going to help a lot, but he's just, he's got to get better. He's got to get, his reads have to be better. His footwork has to be better. He just doesn't look like he's having fun playing football and, and backyard football, like say Sam Levitt from Arizona State, who was making his first start and he looked more than comfortable. Uh, Idaho started their backup quarterback last week, Jack Wagner. He started the game eight for eight. Um, and that's, to me, something the Cowboys need to do. They need to get Evan some easy throws early on and then let him at it. Flipping over the defense uh, just for a moment, Wyatt Eckler is a name I think most uh, BYU fans would recognize just from having watched the Cowboys. They're, they're coming in, speaking of BYU, without their top two running backs as well. Both LJ Martin as well as Hinkley Rapati have both officially been ruled out. That comes from offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick. What's the confidence level for Wyoming going up against a, let's be honest, a turnover prone Jake Retzloff, a quarterback for BYU? That's the key, man. Wyoming's defense hasn't even come close to getting a turnover this year. And uh, this is the time to do it. Retzloff's been giving it up way too much. I listened to Sataki talking this week about it. He's giving the ball up way too much, and the Cowboys need to take full advantage of that. And that could start with a guy like Wyatt Eckler, who's so good in the blitz game and he's good in coverage. Uh, he talked post game, and you know something that's been a little troubling to me, Jake, over these first two games is we haven't seen a ton of emotion. Okay. Uh, we haven't seen the look on guys' faces that I just lost to Idaho at home, and that's uh, that's disturbing. And we didn't show up in Tempe. I'm not seeing that kind of emotion. That maybe maybe I'm crazy. I'd be the one throwing helmets and being in the third row. But uh, you know, he's uh, he showed some emotion after this game. He hit the podium. He raised his voice. He said, "We're not even close to being what we can be." They have nine starters returning on that side of the ball. And uh, we saw glimpses of what they can do. And I hate to keep prefacing it this way, Jake, but it's against an FCS team at home uh, with a backup quarterback. Uh, they went to sleep for 10 minutes in the first half of that game and let Idaho take control. And second half, held them off the scoreboard. They Idaho didn't do much of anything, but Jay Saw Bell be the first to tell you they weren't conservative because they're an FCS team on the road and they're trying to milk that clock and get out of there with the W. And so that's exactly what they did. Now, uh do you expect them, because obviously BYU are their top two running backs, do you expect Wyoming to try and just sell out and make it so it's, it's Jake Retzloff's got to win this game with his arm essentially and essentially hope that he is turnover prone? I would. I absolutely would, especially with their backups. In, you know, And I'm sure they have a, 
I'm sure their third string running backs just just fine. I think actually he's the guy who toasted Wyoming in 2022, if I remember correctly. It is Miles so, Davis who had career high that day. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, and we all know BYU's offensive line probably averages 700 pounds a piece, and they're you know 35 years old. So you're going up against men. I mean, those men are going to move people. And uh, BYU's always been known to have the big, nasty, big, mean, you know, uh, big fronts. And uh, that'll be nothing new. So, um, yeah, that kid went nuts in, in 2022 in Lavelle Edwards Stadium. I believe even their their tight end went nuts that day as well. Um, Cowboys just can't allow that, allow that to happen. I see, you know, and they are a little young at the cornerback spot. They've had, they've had some troubles at the cornerback spot so far. But a guy I would keep my eye on if I were you, a guy who has to have a big game. And that's defensive end Sebastian Harsh. He's a guy who's just been earmarked as their best pass rusher. He had a devastating knee injury two years ago, literally broke his kneecap horizontally in half and had to get that thing wired up. And um, he's just, we keep hearing about it and hearing about it, and he'll flash and he'll flash. But this is a game where, in my opinion, he needs to get to Rets Lab and not only get to him a couple times, but get the ball out, get, get the ball loose. Maybe even the Cowboys need to score a defensive touchdown in this game to spark some stuff.